Okay, we're gonna try this again. I don't know what happened. My phone was on its side and I didn't like the fact that I was sideways. I just thought maybe it might be better for you to get a better angle if I turned it in, uh, not in portrait, but landscape. But apparently Facebook doesn't like that. So we're trying another live today. I just wanted to come on real quick and come up with just some fun things you can do with your kids. As we're getting into the school year, getting started, and we're thinking about what we can do. Of course, I'm in the pathway of an airplane, so you can hear that, of course. But um, as school's getting closer, you're thinking about activities for your kids, you want to make them educational. Um, you might want to be, you're waiting for a while before you start school and you want to just keep your kids busy. And so I'm going to start thinking of some things that you can do that can be just fun activities, but you can also add an educational element if you want to. And so this is one that I think is a really fun one. It's super easy to set up, uh, doesn't require a lot of materials. I just got a sheet of paper and I taped it to some concrete and go out on the sidewalk or the driveway and do this. I recommend you tape it down because um, if their wind, wind comes and blows everything over, you're gonna have some frustrations. So I just grabbed some tape and taped down the corners. Um, also, you wanna do this probably in the early morning hours or in the late afternoon because um, you want those shadows to get nice and long. And so I have a couple of animals that I picked up from the dollar store. Your kids may already have bunches of these. Uh, you can use pretty much anything. It doesn't have to be um, animals. It could be buildings. It could be anything really that your kids want to do. And you can set them up and you see how they make a beautiful shadow onto the paper. And so then grab, give them some pe uh, colored pencils, um, markers, or whatever you want them to use, crayons, and have them trace the outline of their critters. Then they get this beautiful illustration that they can color in. You can go grab some sticks and some rocks and other things, and leaves, and decorate and make some um, trees for these animals. You can have them color them in. You can have them tell you a story, have them dictate a story to you about what's going on. Maybe it's an animal parade. Uh, have them talk about the different kinds of animals and where they might live. Um, just all kinds of things to just spark that activity, get, getting them engaged. They're also building those fine motor skills of illustrating the proprioception where they're trying to, they're having to color on the ground versus on a book. Um, so lots of great things come from activities like this. Um, I'm going to try to keep coming back a little more often with more things like this for you guys. If you have any rec uh, requests, ages or indoor stuff or outdoor stuff you know you could do this indoors too if it was a, a dark day rainy day uh, just using a, um, a lamp to create a shadow and having having them make their shadow pictures that way so there's lots of things you can do um, and so let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or requests and I'll see what I can do as well I'm always looking for ways we can incorporate science too so we want to do that when we can and there's lots of science we can talk about where these animals live in the world how what they eat how they survive I've got a couple of uh, I've got a Actually, all three of these guys are herbivores, and so they're not carnivores. They don't. So you can talk about what herbivores are: plant eaters versus uh, carnivores, which are animal eaters. And so, um, lots of things you can do to jump off from an activity like this. So, have a great day. Uh, hope to come back soon and share more stuff with you. Hope you guys have a great time.